You're going? Okay. Welcome to the first episode of the Brook and Breck podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Tate. Uh, I'm Nick, and we're here with a special guest, Mr. Kathy. Kathy, me. thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, I want to start by asking you one of the most important questions I think <laughs> any high schooler can ask. How okay. often do you work out? How often do I work out? Yeah. Now, not nearly enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, because like to compared to other other teachers here at school, you're pretty pretty muscular. Okay, uh, I size. try to do I what know. I can. Um, one, it's a lot of genetics, I can tell you that. Okay. Um, but two, no, really, I don't nearly as much as I need to. Um, mm -hmm. I'm one of those people that I understand that your mind is very very impacted by your body, yeah. like waking up at the right time, eating the right stuff, working out how you need to. Mm -hmm. um, and a big thing in the change of my life, I'd say in about the last year or so, is trying to find that time to work out, to yeah. do what I need to do. Um, now, I will say my eating's been a little bit better, but mm -hmm. getting to the gym, That's I don't get there like I need to. Because like, I'm pretty active just because being a student athlete yeah, and all absolutely. that. absolutely. But man, snacking, mm -hmm. so, like at my <laughs> job, right, so... Uh, on Sundays, mm -hmm. I, I have to watch the place for like six hours, okay. and it's a concession stand. There and I will, yeah. it's from like before I would even wake up to like after oh, lunch. Yeah. Yeah, you're just sitting around eating junk. I'm just snacking yeah. Yeah. all day. Yeah, Soft and that's pretzels, part of it. Chips. Yeah, as you get older, you kind of realize <laughs> the metabolism changes, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. even in my 20s, mm -hmm. I started feeling my metabolism change because it was the same way. You know, when I was here, I was doing basketball. Mm -hmm. I was in the show choir. Now, I get it, it's choir, Ooh. but it was show choir. Like, we're dancing, and we're all over the place. Yeah. Like, every single day, we're doing this stuff. So, my activity was all over the place, and I remember getting into my 20s, and it changed. I'm eating that junk. I'm doing that stuff, but... I'm not working out like I used to. And so same way, especially now that I'm in my 30s, mm -hmm. my metabolism slowing down even more. So again, it's trying to make sure I eat the right stuff, take care of that. But yes, you're right. I do. I need to get into the gym. Now, do you get in like enough sleep? Because for me, my problem is that I don't get near enough sleep yeah. to maintain a healthy kind of yes. balance of stuff. Um, sleep is one thing that I'm really trying to work on. Because as I'm noticing, there's a lot of people that are saying... Oh, sleep's the most important thing. You got to make sure you yeah, sleep in eight, eight hours a day. Yeah, that eight hours That's a nice night. to yeah. say, but now what do you do when you're an insomniac? What do you do when you wake up four hours into it and you can't fall back asleep? Right. What do you do when you're someone who feels like I'm responsible for two daughters at home, a wife at home, two thousand students in this building, and like when I wake up and I'm thinking about something, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like you, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Those those gears are turning. Like what do I do now? You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's trying to figure out. Yes, that sleep's important and I need it, but it's figuring out how can I keep it consistent, right? Because right? some nights I'm able to get that six to eight hours and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. Some nights you're talking about I'm on one, two hours of sleep and I'm literally on fumes all day long. You yeah. Just when you just take shot a shot of night cooler. <laughs> 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 it goes down Hopefully you're good to go on that one. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, but so you know you're you're worried. First of all, how is your family? How are they? Family's doing well. Okay. Um, you, you know, my wife uh, transferred over to Central. Mm -hmm. um, my oldest daughter, Makaya, she's 14 now. She's a freshman. At Central. Okay. Um, she never got into the traditional program, which at first was kind of heartbreaking for me because, um, yeah. again, all the time, you know, yeah. you're talking about someone who's a graduate from the traditional program. Mm -hmm. I played in the state championship. I did all kinds of things here as a student in the advanced program, as I said, show choir earlier and all that. Right. I come back and dedicate, dedicate my time as a teacher, assistant AD, do all these things, and then my daughter doesn't get what I like to call that golden ticket, that ticket that says, hey, you're able to be here. Um, and at first it was pretty hard, yeah. but then you kind of realize, okay, we make blessings out of every opportunity. Yeah, you just um, kind of roll with the punches. Yes, and right when right. she didn't get in, I kind of figured, well, I can sit around and I can be angry about it, or we can find a plan. And that's what we did. We really researched all the different schools in the district. Um, I grew up with Central's principal, so I know him pretty well. I know what they're trying to do. Their assistant principal, uh, Ms. Beaumont, she graduated here from Mail with me. So again, I've got a really good connection at Central, and I know what they're trying to do. Um, so my wife being able to go there and teach, mm -hmm. and my daughter being a freshman there, it's a really good opportunity for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're doing well. They're doing well. Okay. So she's not a manual. Yeah. yeah uh, no, no, no. Either. There's no way she's going to be a goat. We don't do that goat stuff around No, right, right. We don't call them goats because oh. they're not the goats. <coughs> I know. I get it. But back in my day, we used to call them goats because we didn't want to call them rams. Right. We didn't mean the greatest of all time. Oh, we meant a nasty, stupid goat that just rams its head into things. So right. I've got to remember with you all's lingo as a younger <laughs> 
I've got to kind of change my stuff around. It's right. like people still saying swag or something like that. Like, <laughs> it's time to let some things yeah, go and move on. Now, there you go. There you go. There you go. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, well, actually, t touching on that, yeah, like, have you noticed a lot of differences between your time here and, and, and like, the culture back then versus the culture now? Um, yeah, there are some cultural changes, but I don't think it's necessarily male as much as it is society. Mm -hmm. Like, here's my thing. Like, because you always hear a lot of times, well, male's not what it was 15 years yeah, ago. You, yeah. Well, no crap, neither is my cell phone. I had a Zach Morris brick cell phone 15 years ago. <laughs> things change, right. you know, that's natural. So there are some things that are good, and some things that are a little bit bad and that struggle a little bit. But at the end of the day, we still got that tradition and that idea of excellence yeah. and trying to push ourselves forward. I think a big thing is, and I've talked to a lot of people about it, I, I think it's the natural evolution of the traditional program. Mm -hmm. um, I think over the years, instead of sitting down and really having a focal point and really having that leader that kind of says, hey, this is what we want, this is what the traditional program has been in the past, mm -hmm. and this is kind of where it's going in the future. We kind of need that leader that can kind of sit down with all of our stakeholders, our students, parents, alumni, everybody, the elementary schools, the middle schools that are traditional schools. You get what I'm saying? And, yeah. and talk about what's it feeding up to? What is this traditional program? What does it mean? We always talk about it, we always say it, but again, it's just very, very nebulous. It's just yeah. evolved into its own thing over the last 20 years versus us sitting down and very specifically saying, okay, what are the evolutions? What are the changes and why are we going where we're going? Like personally for me, uh -huh. like, yeah. I mean, I know I'm about to I'm about to speak on something that I'm out of <laughs> <laughs> but I'm cold and it's winter. But like for the dress code, I've always loved that the traditional program you set apart, you like have the dress code. You yeah. have, you're distinguished, and I was talking to Mr. Poor about it mm -hmm. with uh, Claire Benford, mm -hmm. and he would always say that one of the greatest things that instilled the spirit was that when you wore that uniform, that yeah. collared shirt, the yeah. strict, and you got to Friday, you it was you were happy to be a yes. male. You could wear all your spirit, and then yeah. now it's just every other day. There like, barely oh, is a dress code. Yeah. I mean, yeah. As yeah. long as you're wearing something khaki colored, you could get away with it. I, yeah. No teacher has said anything to me about this. Really? No. Oh, yeah. Again, cold, so well, that, yeah. but that's what I'm talking about, about making sure that we're all kind of on the same line. Because, again, we know what it is, and you all see me. Again, the dress code may not be the biggest priority to me, mm -hmm. but I try to make sure you're on it, right? Yeah. Because it's part of the job. Yeah. You come, you do the job every day, you do your work, you go home, do your thing, and then guess what? You get up the next day, and you come in, you and do you do same. your job, yeah. you do your work. So we're trying to make sure you stay on it and do the right stuff with it. But, yes, yeah, so that is actually a really good example. It's very nebulous because it's just kind of evolved into its own thing versus someone really being at the top of the pyramid and really right. saying from kindergarten through, like, mm -hmm. this is what the traditional program is. And, again, whether you're just talking about a dress code or our structure or whatever it is, those things just need to be pinpointed. Yeah. yeah. So it's really just kind of lost its focus is what you're saying? Yeah, th I think that's kind of okay. what it is. I, I, I don't think we're all necessarily looking in the same direction mm -hmm. um, because we necessarily haven't had that idea that we need to look in the same direction. Right. Um, I think Dr. Jury has come into this building and he's done an amazing job of what I like to say, stopping the bleeding. Mm -hmm. I think Mel was at a point, we were at a very pivotal point um, when we hired him full time. And I wasn't in the building as a teacher at that time. But as an alum and someone who's very connected with this building, I kind of knew what was going on and where we were at that point. Right. And he came in here and he put, you know, he stopped that bleeding because Mel really was, I mean, we had some internal bleeding and some problems that were going on and he came through as a professional and did what he needed to. But trying to capture the entire traditional program and evolve it, that necessarily wasn't, I don't think, needed to be his focus. He, right. His focus needed to be we all need to be clear. We all need to be plain. We all need to be um, stable, I guess is probably our best word when I say that. That's why I'm kind of going like that because, again, we were bleeding and we were all over the place. Yeah. He gave us stability. Now it's time to figure out, like I was saying, get that leader. Let's evolve. Let's take it where it needs to go. Yeah, I got a buddy who, that I work with, Andrew. He graduated. Uh -huh. I wanted, like he was... He, he was at Mayo during the whole instability. Yes. Yeah. And he said, like, towards the end, mm -hmm. my kids were like, hated the, the yeah. old principal like yeah. they were rioting and yeah. oh my the God. memes were the, the memes, <laughs> memes. That's, that's the one thing emphasized that memes yeah, were that good was memes. That. and that was actually during the time of uh, dank memes we were talking about yeah. swag earlier and all those words that got, you know that was during the time of that stuff, right you know where you were hearing that all the time so the memes were going all over the place 
I think sometimes we get very, very caught up in this exact moment. And when we compare things, we want to compare something to now versus a year ago, or now versus five years ago, or now versus 20 years ago. Or I can compare mail today to mail in 1856 when it was first established. Well, yeah. guess what? We saw a lot of ties and we saw a lot of jackets and there weren't any men that looked like us walking that's, around them always. Facts. There was that's, no Claire that's, Benfords that's walking facts. around. Yeah. The, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, So evolution has to come. It's just, is the evolution going to come itself or are we going to be in control of that? And I guess that's kind of what I'm getting to. Mm -hmm. We need to be in control of the evolution of the traditional program and what it means versus it just becoming its own entity upon itself. Right. So now since Dr. Jerry is is leaving, mm -hmm. what is it, like the 30th? I think it's <laughs> yeah. it's, it's coming day. up. It's yeah, coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's it's coming up. soon. Moving forward from, well. Uh, yeah, that sound like a movie trailer. <laughs> coming <laughs> Sorry, soon. coming soon. My the retirement of I mean, that's kind of, it kind of is a movie, <laughs> I guess. But um, moving forward from here, you know, what do, what do you want to see in a new principle in terms of I guess like acknowledging the traditional program and trying to I guess recapture this. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, like what would you like to kind of? I'd like to see someone who is a leader. And mm -hmm. when I say that, uh, here's what I've realized about leadership as I've kind of evolved into this position and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Leadership is dealing with the tough things that other people don't necessarily want to deal with. Right. It's having the hard conversations with some adults, whether it be teachers, whether it be parents, whether it be young adults that are still you are 17, 18 years old. You're becoming adults. Sometimes it's about having hard conversations with some people. Some of us are becoming adults. Some <laughs> yeah, of, there some you of go. us here. Some of us take a little bit longer to become adults. Yeah. Trust me, I know how it goes. Um, but yeah, I want a leader who's going to come in here and set that example and set that standard every single day. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I like to say about male high school is we have overtime students. That means you all put in so much time to be successful at what you do. Yeah. Regardless of who, for the most part, we have overtime students. That means you all deserve overtime teachers. You yeah. deserve teachers that are going to put in that time and put in that work. So those teachers deserve overtime administrators, mm -hmm. principals, assistant principals, deans of students, however you want to look at it, that are going to be here and lead and set the example by constantly putting in that overtime, constantly setting that example. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that leader that will come in, handle the hard conversations, handle the hard stuff that needs to be handled, mm -hmm. and then Set that example for all of us. Show us what it means to work and care about the traditional program and to cultivate it and to create this entire culture for us. See, like, for me personally, just yeah. like watching not only male, but like society itself. Yes. So yes. I think, I don't think it's hard. Well, I, I think it's less hard to find someone who's willing to have that hard conversation. Yeah. I think it's more hard to find people willing to listen to that hard okay. conversation. Okay, good. Can you elaborate a little bit? Like, Cause like there's a bunch of people that can will will make the tough claims or make the claims that everyone yeah. doesn't want to hear and yeah. then like they'll either completely shut off and be like okay. no you're wrong Good. Right. shout you out Good. shout you down Good. or like you know my dad and dad were talking about JCPS and how so many parents threaten lawsuits yes. and now yes. JCPS has to bend to the will Everything. of the parents yes absolutely because they don't want to mm -hmm. because we have the money we're the biggest district yeah. in yeah. the yeah. state yeah. so it's I don't think it's I think it'll be harder to get the parents Good. to listen, especially if you get a principal coming in and he's like, well, you know, colored hair is a no-no, mm -hmm. piercing is a no-no, and he wants to bring that back. back. Okay. Well, I mean, now the box has been open. You yes. have students fighting tooth and nail. Absolutely. Parents of the students fighting tooth and nail. Yeah. And I think it'll be tough to wrangle in and set one path. Yeah. Like you said. That's actually a really have. that's actually a really good point because that's a good example of what I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. like. Are we in control of these things? Are we kind of the ones who are leading the transformation and the evolution of it, or is it just happening? Like, for instance, that's why so many people were taken aback when the earrings things change, the beard thing changes, yeah. the hair, different stuff like that, because it kind of hit us like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Instead of us evolving through time mm -hmm. and us having these tough conversations, this and that, we kind of, what you were saying, we kind of reacted instead right. of being proactive with it. So yes, you're very right. We need the people who will come in here and have the tough conversations, but not necessarily be a dictator with yeah. those tough conversations. As I was saying earlier, take in your stakeholders, listen to your students, listen to your alum, listen to your, and they might all want different things, mm -hmm. but then you as the leader have to be the one to say, this is what's right. This is the decision that we're going to make. This is what I feel will work best. 
for all of our stakeholders that are involved. Like personally, I like I'm I, I'm all right with the beard, the new beard yeah. rules, but yeah. like the piercings and the colored hair. Okay. Can't say I'm a fan of it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I do. I do. I get it. I would <laughs> say this, but this is me personally. Yeah. I'm not necessarily a fan personally of the hair stuff, but from a school standpoint, I can understand yeah. why we don't necessarily want it in the school. There you go. So again, you don't necessarily have to agree with something personally to then go out there. I think I right. would talk to you about this and Claire about it in class all the time. Like, I'm not a religious person. I'm, I was baptized when I was a child, but I wouldn't consider myself a Christian yeah, or have you yeah. look at it. Right. But I still go to church. Mm -hmm. I can still sit down and listen to the message and figure out how does it fit me and this and that. So again, it's just not making it so personal about you. Right. Yeah. Okay. So no, you, no, you can go. I've asked a lot, a lot of questions. No, no, no. Well, I, I, was, I was just gonna say that, like, you know, talking about this, it kind of ties into your, because I, you know, being on the on the Brook and Break, we have a we have a lot of social media. Kind yeah, of absolutely. Outlets and and we, I've seen your Twitter feed. A lot of the times, one of your hashtag that, that you'll have with your tweets is is for the H. Yes. Yes. Um, can you elaborate kind of on, on what? Well, yeah, the, the H. <laughs> for the yeah, H. Can you um, kind of elaborate on like like what that means or how that kind of? The way I look at it is the H is our shield. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, being a former English teacher, um, I believe in that literal language and that figurative language, right? So when I say what's up, I'm not saying, oh, 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 let's look at the sky and tell me literally what's up there. No, I get it, smart people. I get it. You're so smart, you don't understand figurative language. <laughs> I get it. me with the sky, I might hit them. Yeah, it's like, okay, I get it. You're smarter than everyone else because you don't want to acknowledge that figurative language exists. But yeah. it does exist, right? Right. The H is our shield. I'm not literally holding it, but it's that barrier, it is that thing that we all know that we can stand behind. Mm -hmm. That every single one of us, all 2,030 of you students, all 97 teachers, all of our administrators, every alum that has come before and every alum that comes after, mm -hmm. we can stand behind that shield. And it is that thing that embraces us and keeps us all there. It protects us, it holds us, it keeps us unified, right. it lets us know that we have a higher calling. A higher purpose kind of what I was saying earlier about the job about the work it never stops mm -hmm. like life doesn't stop just because you get over a milestone or just because you get that job you finally wanted or you finally get that fit it doesn't stop that you still have to wake up the next day and keep doing it and keep doing it the H is that thing that I feel like can remind us constantly we got to keep going yeah this place has to be excellent and in order for it to be excellent that means that every single day we have to be willing to put in what I was saying earlier, that overtime work. We have to be willing to do the excellent things to stand behind that H to keep it as what it is. So yeah, I look at it as that figurative shield in our lives. It's that thing that kind of keeps us all connected and lets us know, stay focused, stay great. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Hot Takes with Kathy, you talked okay. about paths and the um, way you're going. Where do you see mail going? Where do you oh, want yeah. there to go in um, the next 10 years? Mail in the next 10 years should be and will be the number one um, school, not only in Kentucky, but in the nation. Oh, um, big goals, big goals. wow. That, that I, is a hot take. I oh feel gosh. like we have been in that discussion regularly since 1856. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, there are waves, and there are ups and downs, and there are all those things. Mm -hmm. But what we have right now is the ability to be the flagship school of JCPS, which means we then have the ability to be the flagship school of Kentucky. Um, if we have that ability and everything that we have in this traditional program, if you put in the right leaders, the right dynamic, I, I don't think there are schools that can touch us. Um, I say that any high school, especially a, a college prep high school like ours, you should have those four A's. Those four A's should be great. That's academics, mm -hmm. athletics, arts and then your after school stuff your pep rallies your parties your just all that stuff when you graduate as an alumni like after school your life and all that those four a's mm -hmm. there's not a school in the city that's touching us in all four all four. Oh, yeah. Is there a school that might be beating us a little bit in the arts or maybe a little bit ahead of us and I get it but athletically, they're not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is there maybe a school out there in the state <laughs> that in athletics might be a little they're bit amazing, better? But really I don't think so, but there might be. Yeah. But then that school is not touching us in academics. Or you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all four things, that H is part of that yeah. final 4A, that after school thing. That's the H. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. no school has that. And I feel like if we really jump into that, being excellent in all four of those categories, you should be the best student, you should be the best in your arts, in your athletics, whatever that may be, 
And then when it's after school stuff, when it's time for you to be an alum, when it's time for you to have your parties and embrace one another and enjoy yourself, do that. Have the time of your life. Love it up, live it up. Don't do nothing stupid, right? Mm -hmm. We've had this talk in my classroom and all that, right? You got to know where your line is. But <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, you enjoy yourself. That, right. That's what it should be. We should be excellent at all four of those A's. And I feel like there's not another school in this state, mm -hmm. not many in this nation, that can compete with what we can in all four of those A's. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, y uh, you're talking about in, in your classroom how you were a former English teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've transitioned to this role of Dean of Students, yes. I guess is your official title? Yes. When did that kind of happen? And, and, what does and that mean? <laughs> I've been wondering that for so long. A, a lot of kids are kind of wanting to know yeah. because they're like, um, like, like, Kathy's Dean of Students, well, what is that? Essentially, the way to think of it is I would, I would think of myself as kind of an assistant principal intern. Mm -hmm. um, as the Dean of Students, and I really like that term because it reminds me every day what my focus is. Mm -hmm. My focus is to be here and to help you all be the best you can be and to learn how to lead okay. for yourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, that's why I'm here. I'm here to have that connection with all 2,030 of you. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's yeah. exhausting because oh. it's a lot of you that I have to kind of play this <laughs> role for. But that's what I'm here for. Um, right now, I'm currently at Bellarmine taking classes to become an assistant principal. So in July, I'll finish my classes. I'll take my test and all that, my rank one test and all that. Go and nice. hopefully, yes, go Bellarmine. Um, hopefully, I'll pass and then be ready to be an assistant principal. So what, so what, so what Dr. Jury has kind of helped me, and it's been a huge blessing by giving me this dean of student role, is mm -hmm. I get to kind of learn the job while doing the job. So right. essentially, like I said, I'm an assistant principal intern. I'm kind of filling in to help our assistant principals and do all the different things that they do. So yeah. then what I'm kind of hearing is that if, if things go right, which they will, <laughs> you're going to be an assistant principal after we leave. Okay. Uh, I'll be an assistant principal somewhere after you leave, yes. Whether that's at Mail, whether that's uh, elementary school or middle school, uh, I'm just, I'm ready to lead. Um, right. And like I said, I guess that's the main thing that I'm trying to focus on for this year. I guess two things. One, I want to set that example for you all every single day. I want you to see what it means to pay it forward, yeah. to work with the next generation, and to always try to set that example and be that leader. Mm -hmm. And then my second thing is, like I was just saying a couple seconds ago, I want to be prepared. Yeah. This is my intern year so that the second I graduate, the Board of Education knows, JCPS knows, this guy's ready. You know, I may not be the best leader out there, but I have the experience to at least kind of fit into that role and go with where we need to go with from there. So, yeah. uh, so obviously there's a, a big age gap between you and Dr. Jury, but uh, <laughs> you, you speak of great admiration for the yes, man. Do absolutely. you wish to uh, to follow the same path? Do you really want to? Do you want to step into administration and be there for the majority of your career, or do you see yourself as going into the administration and then saying? Ah, uh, too corporate for me. I'm going to go back to the classroom and yeah. go where I started. I think, um, but also remember, like, just because you feel something at the moment doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. If you would ask me 10 years ago, there's no way I would have ever imagined that I'd be becoming an assistant principal. A decade ago, I would have told you, oh, hell no. No, I'm in the classroom. Like, I'm te like I don't yeah. want to go out there and deal with telling adults what to do and all these kids in the building and working with the kids who aren't even my students at... But over time, that evolved, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. things change. So right now, what would I say? Yes, I anticipate becoming a leader of a school building. Um, and from there, just trying to consistently grow, whether that means I become a principal myself, mm -hmm. even an assistant superintendent or superintendent. Just, I want to keep growing within my leadership role. Now, does that mean it's going to stay that way? Who knows? A year from now, I may do all this and realize that like, uh, it's not. And like I said, I may want to go back in the classroom. Yeah. But right now, at this moment where I am, I couldn't imagine ever going into a classroom again. Like, mm -hmm. teaching is just, it's not, at least for me and my personality, where I am at 36 years old, it's not necessarily the thing for me. Um, I feel like these walls, these four walls right here, kind of keep me confined. Right. I can't do it the way that I need to do it. Mm -hmm. I can't have my personality and really interact with you all the way that we need to. Also, I'm not going to lie, at 36 years old, I don't want to go home and read any more essays. 
Like, I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, I'm we don't want to write yeah, it. I know, hell, yeah. right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, just come you know, back. We can kind of <laughs> put our differences aside. But here's my thing. And this is, but I, And I'm serious on this one. I'm serious on this one. Because yeah. me and Mr. Stewart talked about it a lot last year. You know that. Mr. Stewart's one of my greatest mentors that I have. Yeah. And when I was really realizing how kind of stuck I was feeling in the classroom, that's a talk that he and I had. Because he said, well... If you aren't in the classroom impacting these kids, like if you aren't the one in here doing it, what are they going to do? Like who's going to help these He's kids? Be there for them. Yeah. And my attitude was, you're right. So then we need to find the right teacher to help them, and I need to get myself where I can truly make an impact. But me just staying in there where I'm not truly making the impact that I know I can make, the students can tell I'm just kind of going through the motions. What's the point? Why are we doing this? I'd much rather find an active, hungry, strong teacher that really wants to get in there and do that stuff and then me find my natural fit to be able to help the whole building and there you go. We're really making a difference. And I feel like we were blessed enough to be able to find Ms. Isaacs to be able to have that happen. Mm -hmm. Because again, Dr. Drury gave me an amazing opportunity to be able to step into the hallways and help you all so much more. Ms. Isaacs coming along gave, made it that much better because she does. Every day when I stop in there and I check on those kids, every day when I see what she's doing, every day when I see her energy and what she brings to our students, it's amazing. So to be able to see how I can put myself in the right position and to see that new, young, hungry teacher ready to come in like I was 15 years ago, that's awesome. That's what this yeah. process should be. Instead of me hitting my head against a brick wall because I feel like I'm stuck, Evolve. Keep working. The job is the job. I wish I knew who Miss Isaacs was. <laughs> no, she, 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 she's the teacher in Canada. Yeah, she's so, the new yeah, one yeah she's the new one right there for uh, where I was. So essentially, when we hired her, that's when I was able to transition out. And I think that's why so many people were confused. Because right. remember, this year I started teaching, teaching in the classroom. Yeah. So even though we knew we were going down this road and I was going to be the dean of students and all that, I'm still in the classroom. Then all of a sudden, we can hire her like a month into the school build, the school year. All of a sudden, on a Monday, I'm thrown out into the yeah, hallways. Everybody's kind of like, "I'm going." Well, yeah, like yeah. Well, everybody's like, "Well, what's going on now?" Like, I thought you were a teacher. I thought you know. So yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. those kids were about to be bad because they thought that she was a sub. Yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. know that. Yeah, you know yeah. that. Um, and she you know some of them. Back and <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kathy coming? What do you mean? Oh no! <laughs> but that's the talk that I had with her. Was you've got to know. Some kids are in there because they want my personality. No yeah. different than after this year, there are going to be some kids that sign up for that class because they know her personality and they want to be with her. Mm -hmm. Just like there are some kids that sign up for Mr. Stewart's classes because they want his personality and who he is. So again, a lot of it is getting the right person into the right classes so that they can really get the job done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shout out Stu Dog. <laughs> well, Always, and, and and so this, I guess, this like desire to learn, or to I guess to to motivate students and to really kind of mentor them, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't really stop just here. You would say, right? Like, like wouldn't it also kind of go on the yeah. on the basketball court? Yeah, it's the basketball court. It's life. It's everywhere. Yeah. Um, it starts with basketball, and that's why I don't mind. Sometimes, um, it was probably about two weeks ago. Somebody apologized because they called me Coach Kathy. Well, it's not Coach Kathy anymore. It's Dean, and they were joking. <laughs> and it, but I. I think I'll be Coach Kathy for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, I can be a principal. I can be a superintendent. I can be at home with my daughters. I'm coaching. That's what this is. That's really what teaching is. Mm -hmm. Like, look at a lot of the mantras that are coming into education right now, talking about culture and all that type of stuff. These are things that are coming from the coaching world that are yeah. kind of fusing into there. And that's all this stuff is. Teaching, all of it. It's just coaching. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was at the movies. Uh, my wife and I went to go see It. Chapter two. Um, was that good? I didn't see it yet. I liked it. I did. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, I mean, I did. I enjoyed okay. it. But you know how it is nowadays. Yeah. So you either have to love something or hate. You know, hate. There's no it's pretty good. It, chapter one for me was more funny than scary. That's part of it. So you got to know what you're looking into. That that that's why I was saying like, yeah, it was pretty good. You know, it wasn't nearly as scary, but it was still a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. Um. So, anyways, a couple weeks ago. My wife and I go to see the movie, um, and we never go out. You know, we're homebodies. We don't do anything. Mm -hmm. But she loves Stephen King. Um, she reads 24-7. That's all she does. And so when it came out, we knew, okay, we're going to see it. So we go to see it, and, of course, it's a Friday night, and there's sitting right next to us probably seven, eight teenagers mm -hmm. right here. And, it, like, okay. I love you all. You yeah. all know that. But, yeah. 
when you work with someone 24-7, mm-hmm. the last thing you want when you're relaxing is to have to, to yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So I wasn't that. saying it yeah. like it, but it's like, oh, here are some teenagers. Has a, At least you weren't in the back row. That's yeah, very true, because we know how that goes. Yeah, 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 nah, yeah, 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 yeah,
So, you know, speaking of basketball, how are you feeling about the upcoming season? Oh, oh I'm here number one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm that, that's what I've been seeing. By, by I don't know about undefeated. Um, refreshing the state. Yeah, let me, let me say this. I, I think preseason will be certainly top three ranked. Mm -hmm. um, depending on who you talk to and what part of the state you go to, we there will mm -hmm. be some places that will say we're, the, we're number one in the state. Mm -hmm. um, I welcome the expectations. Anyone that knows me knows that when I played here, we went to back to back to back regional titles. Oh, Three years in a row, yeah. we won the region. Mm -hmm. We haven't been back to the region since then. My entire purpose of this program, of coaching here specifically, of bringing in Hayworth, of it, all of this is to be where we are right now, is to be back to being number one and the favorites that, like we we are the school that everyone should be shooting for and right. that's what i want how does bas is basketball the same as soccer where they do like districts regions and then state or is it state then regional district regional state okay. yes so your top two teams in the district will go to regionals gotcha. then your team that wins the region Go goes to on state. to state right. yeah okay. yeah so that's what we want now does it mean you're always going to win the state tournament no no, especially in the seventh region, your goal should always be to compete to win the seventh region and to have a chance to go to Rupp Arena, to play for that state championship, to have that chance. Because you got to remember, we aren't classed. There's no class 1A and 2A and 4A. And a, it's just region. It's every single Whoa. school. There will be one state champion in basketball at the end of the season. Wow. One. So, so you're like you, you're trying to be like like the top of the top. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you're wow. the winner in in basketball, <coughs> you're that's like it. Yeah. Yes, that's it. There's no classes, I, so I it no just it makes like it a little bit of a different expectation. Yeah. Um, so that's why I say competing for that regional championship, mm -hmm. trying to get back to Rupp for the first time in 17 years now, it's a big deal. And we, like I said, we want that expectation because that's the only way we're going to get the best competition out of every team that we play. Like, for instance, we just scrimmaged Lexington Catholic, and they brought it. Yeah. I mean, they flat out brought it, and we want that. That's the only way we're going to be as good as we yeah. can be. There's just something about playing that number one. Yeah. That either it'll either crush you yes. or it'll pressure will make diamonds, and you'll yeah. have the best game of your career. And that's what I want. That's what we want for our young men. Again, does that mean that we're always going to win? No. Does it mean that we're always a, But at the end of the day... I want the highest expectation because right, again yeah. in those four A's academics athletics arts after school mm -hmm. I expect to be great and basketball is one of those things that means the world to me so yeah was it hard working with coach Hayworth for the first I guess his At first, first year and I don't uh, I don't think hard's the best way I think well, was it was it kind of yeah, yeah it was an adjustment I mean. was, because was you've got awkward. someone who's not from Louisville mm -hmm. you've got someone who's a head coach you've got someone like me who already kind of knows the program knows Louisville and we're just kind of figuring out like how do we work together because you got to remember we had never even met each other yeah. we had never even shook each other's hand before um, coach Kelsey hired him so again seeing what it was now I'm not gonna lie we took a leap of faith and I feel like Hayward took a leap of faith too yeah. for him to be from Hoptown and to try to come here for us to you know get a coach from Hoptown we all took a leap of faith and I think we all knew that we've again got to be all the way in this for it to get figured out or it's not gonna work mm -hmm. and he and I realized that very very quickly mm -hmm. um, we realized very quickly that loyalty matters um, and if we're going to get the best out of these kids, we better be on the same page. Right. And we learned very, very quickly that we're going to go in the same direction. And, yeah, it, it came. I love working with him. Um, he's crazy. He's out of his mind sometimes. Um, but oh, that's Hayward. why I love him. Yeah, he's, that's why I love yeah. him. Um, he's, he loves basketball. Yeah. He loves these kids. He loves male high school. Mm -hmm. And you all know me well enough to know I respect the people that care about the students and care about the school. You care about those two things, you show you have a passion for those things, let's roll. And we've already seen it in one season. In one season, he's taken us from kind of a mid-level, middling program to beating Trinity, beating Ballard. Now we're preseason number one. He is everything that I wanted in our basketball coach. Everything that I wanted in our basketball coach. Mm -hmm. I wish that soccer was like that, Nick. What, All what right, kind of? well, let's see. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be seeing this, so I We're can't speak to my get mind. There. We're working to get there. We're working to get but there. We got some We're doing a good job. The freshman, the freshman for soccer came in pretty good. Yeah, working hard. Yeah. Working yeah. hard, getting there. So, but, yeah. You know, uh, I guess the last thing before we kind of yeah. close yeah. things yeah. up. You know, uh, I was in your class last year. Mm -hmm. No, year before. My yeah, bad. It's okay. And get your facts right. I learned that you're a pretty big conspiracy theorist. Yes. Or you, or you have God. these kind of kind of <laughs> theories about 
yeah. thing. So I, I wanted to know your opinion on, on the hot uh, theory on Jeffrey Epstein. Okay. Um, <laughs> you seen those did memes? you see the? I've, I have seen those memes. And there was a funny. meme that was. Uh, did you see the meme that said uh, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, and so it was yeah. a giant sign on the car, and they were driving yeah. around with that. Um, the yeah, memes just are like it's funny. The, the the popular ones now is like you have some super long description about uh-huh. something. Oh, and then, then it'll the say Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein didn't, didn't kill himself. Kill himself. Okay, all so, right. So Interesting. You, and then one of them I saw it was like like somebody like 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 fished this giant bass out of the ocean or like 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 off of like this stream and like he was yeah. saying what's that in its mouth? Oh my God, there. Who put some note in there and he says, it what does that say on the so camera? <laughs> and it was Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Oh, my gosh. I mean, okay. they're on um, deep. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a firm believer in conspiracy theories. Um, whether it's that specific conspiracy theory, I may not necessarily believe. But, yeah, there's a lot of them that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I do firmly believe that when you're talking about politics, when you're talking about millions, if not billions of dollars, when you're talking about controlling everyone in the world, mm-hmm. Yeah, for us not to assume that there are some people out there doing some pretty dastardly things and some really, I mean, again, yeah, yeah, there are bad people out there and bad people that are doing a lot of things for power and for money. Yeah. Yeah. Are you into uh, secret societies as well? Um, Illuminati, Freemasons? Yeah, my thing is the issue, my issue with the term Illuminati is usually that sets us down a tone and a road of like false information with it. Like Mm -hmm. my degrees of it comes from the five percenters and from the original story and dynamic of that, um, which actually could be a good one that we could have a podcast and talk about sometime. (laughs) Um, But that was something in African-American lit that was interesting to talk about. Like a lot of people know about Malcolm X, but they don't necessarily know that the theories of the black Muslims go back to the big-headed scientist. And the Mm -hmm. idea that the big-headed scientist created white people as mutants. And these mutants, these white people mutants, were the first ones who were put into chains. And they were the first ones who were slaves. And they were the first ones who were run out. You get what I'm saying? Like, we don't talk about that. Yeah. that like, that's where that entire theory of the term Illuminati even comes from. That these people who are now the evil Illuminati people, they are the direct descendants of those creatures yeah. created by the big-headed scientists. Now, but like I said, we don't. Nobody talks about any of this stuff. So it's just interesting to do all that. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about If you, you know, read the autobiography of Malcolm X, I'm dead serious. Mm-hmm. It's in the autobiography of Malcolm X. It's actually in his book that they talk about the theory of the big-headed scientist. That's and, crazy. Yeah. Do you think the moon landing was faked? There's parts of me that does, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. There's parts of me that does. What about yeah. Knights of Templar, Holy Grail? Yeah. yeah, that goes into the Illuminati stuff. Um, the Knights of uh, the Holy Grail, uh, the, is it, uh, the bowl when it comes to HBCUs, um, the Skull and Bones, all of that is supposed to go under the umbrella of Illuminati again, the right. ancestors of the creatures from the big-headed scientist and all that type of stuff. See, I love serious societies because uh, my family, and I plan to join myself, okay. uh, the Freemasons. Yeah, absolutely. My, my uncle and my grandfather are both high-degree Freemasons. Yes, absolutely. I, I plan to join when I'm 18. Yeah. So, you know. And see, this is where people get the misconception because they'll be like, oh, well, Freemasons, my dad's a Freemason. So they and must he's be a, good. Well, no, no, because again, because some people are supposed to know about it, some people aren't. Or some when people are like, well, did you know that Jay-Z is a part of the Illuminati? No, it doesn't work that way. You don't get to just be a part of the <laughs> yeah, Illuminati. Either you're born into it or you're, you're, or you're not. not. Yeah. You could say he's an agent of the Illuminati, that he's a false prophet and doing all that type of stuff. Yeah. But you don't. You get what I'm saying? So, again, if you go back to the original teaching from the five percenters, I'm talking about when I was five, six years old and they were standing on the corners with the bean pies and all that. That's the original kind of stories that I know when it comes from this type of stuff. Right. So it's just a little bit different from the, you know, yeah. perception from and what you the, hear of it now. The, See, that's yeah. why I like, it's like the Freemasons have been around for like yes. eons, yes. millennia or whatever. Yes. And like the traditional program, like they too have evolved. <laughs> yes. It's like their own thing. Like now, like it used to be secret, like you used to have to do yeah. your thing to do. Yeah. But I mean, now they're just basically like a really... Yes community driven yeah. program and mm-hmm. like it's not secret anymore because no. everyone's like yeah done and if you look it. at the roots of it i mean yeah. that's where it comes down to to be able to build right yeah. that's where building comes from that's where we're able to build and then those freemasons learn that from the egyptians and all that type of stuff so mm-hmm. again it's really cool stuff to really go through and research and to learn about and then to figure out like 
why are these theories here? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, obviously, there was not some real big-headed scientist in Africa that went and created, you know what I'm saying, white folk. I but mean, there, there might be. Why? <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, but why is that legend there, right? If you go right. back to ancient Mesopotamia, and, and ancient man, right? You have your original black man, and then you had white man who migrated. And that, so, again, the historical aspect of it versus... Legend. Yeah, all it's, that type it's, of it's stuff. sort of like like how like folk tales spread and like like oh like this this like legend of of werewolves. Yeah. Is is like like a thing, but it like like it really yeah it, it might have came from like oh I just saw this like really hairy big yeah. wolf or something and yeah. I was like oh I'm scared and like now you have this legend of, of werewolves. <laughs> Could you do the imitation of fear again? Oh, I'm scared. You know. With an accent. With an accent. Yeah, with an accent. Yeah. What? I'm just messing. Anyway, Sorry, you happens. know. Okay. But yeah, you know the. It's it's surprising just just how deep these conspiracies kind of go with yeah. with stuff. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, close out today. First of all, thank you for coming. I want to ask you no. one last question. You were in Please. a band. Okay. Yeah. That's a dangerous way to open up a question. I know. Yeah. And it and it was some like hip hop group. Was uh-huh. that right? Yeah. How how was that? How did that go? What's kind of the story there with that? Um. Again, I told you when I was a student here. Um. I did all of it. I kind of like to consider myself back then kind of a renaissance man. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the sports and all that, but I also took advanced classes. And then I was also in the show choir, and we sang in the choir at church and all that stuff. So it started really started with that, with the singing and stuff like that. Um, And then over time, as I got a little bit older, I kind of realized... I kind of got a little bit of a skill with words, yeah. um, and I started making that into some raps, and me and my buddies would start rapping, and, and we realized how much we loved live instrumentation and the live music, especially growing up on rappers like Tupac, UGK, stuff like that. You've got a lot of live instrumentation instead of just a sample beat on a you know control pad. Mm-hmm. So we started mixing our raps with a live band. Which now you see all over the place. Yeah. But back then, I mean, you could count on one hand the number of bands or hip hop groups that had a live band with them. Um, so that was kind of our thing. That was what we did. Um, we toured regionally. Um, some shows in Nashville, Murfreesboro was probably our main place. Murfreesboro mm-hmm. and Lexington were probably our two biggest hotbeds. Yeah. Um, we would play here somewhat, um, mm-hmm. but not a lot. Um, or anything. I just love the music. I did. So what what made you kind of go like like okay this is not sustainable let's go to <laughs> when I realized I was spending more money than making um, it is it's hard being an entrepreneur yeah I mean it's hard I don't care what field you're talking about um, I also realized I needed to make some changes when I realized that if I was going to stay independent mm-hmm. um, again I was going to have to carry the whole load which meant. I needed to jump all in in one of my fields. I couldn't keep teaching during the day, mm-hmm. and then because that's what I was doing. Yeah. You know, I was teaching at PRP all day, and then in the evenings I was doing all music stuff all the time. Yeah. I mean, there were some times where you talk about getting no sleep. I'm doing a show all night, mm-hmm. and then I've got to the be at, day yeah, I've got to be at school. Yeah. You know, we're not done. The club doesn't close till God. three, four o'clock in the morning. I gotta be at work at six o'clock, seven o'clock. Yeah, you know. So especially once I had a family, had kids, and all, I had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Either I can go with Mm -hmm. teaching that I know there's some security here and this and that, or I can stay independent into music and go with that. Mm -hmm. Um, Signing a contract was never gonna happen. I don't care how many contracts you put in front of me. No (laughs) one's gonna own my masters but me. Um, Jay Z said it uh, talking about Prince. You Mm -hmm. think you wanted the masters with his masters. In other words, you think you want all the people who control the music industry owning your stuff? Hell no. Yeah, no. That's uh-uh. I made it. I put in the work. I'm owning my own stuff. Yeah. So, so here's the last question. It's okay. Probably the most important question that I'm going to ask. Go for day. it. Oh, I, okay. I'm down. Do you want to spit a freestyle just for the ending? No, I could not spit a freestyle <laughs> just for the freestyle. ending. Like no. a couple bars here. No, no, no. No, um, no that, it's kind of. That's kinda, I'm that's a kinda... bit out of shape. Yeah. What I could tell you is, if you want me to like give you some tracks that I've done, okay. um, oh yeah, sure. stuff like that, I could do that. Um, he scrubbed most of our old videos because one of the guys that's in the band with us, he still does his own thing. Like he still has his band. He still. That's why sometimes I still do stuff. 
because he'll do a live show for a few years ago. He did the Muhammad Ali thing. And then they did that video that you know I was on a couple yeah. years. Like he still does stuff, so sometimes I'll step in and help him out. Mm -hmm. um, so I can go and find some verses and some videos and There's some stuff. Now. Kathy out of retirement. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy out of retirement. Big time. Do you raps now? Yeah. Big time. And now they have to sit through all 48 minutes just to see what. <coughs> just to be able to get to yeah, that, that's there how you know. do it nowadays. Yeah. Kathy, to close out, do you have any questions for us that you'd like to ask? Um. At all. How? How's the atmosphere? Of the school. Ooh, you gotta think about this one. Tell so you can go first. I mean, okay, that's yeah. how's the atmosphere of the from school? the student perspective, from you all. I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I guess to me, it seems pretty dependent on on the classes that you have. Okay. And the people that you really interact with. Okay. Um, because like to me, I, I'd say that we're pretty lucky to be in a in a school that that likes to or that that prides itself on on uplifting and supporting uh, each other. Um, but I, I do think that there's there's a lot of pressure, yeah. especially if you're if you're involved in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because now like like for me and a few my friends, it's like like it's our senior year, and we've got to worry about uh, college, we got to worry about extracurriculars like sports, like soccer for Nick. Yeah, yeah. Got to worry about. Um, like our, 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 our actual schoolwork, and mm -hmm. we're balancing also my social life and, and our, our own personal health. It just like, you know, it kind of becomes like like a, like a sliding scale of well, let me like this like today I'll focus on like my extracurriculars and my my health, but like you know I might not be able to like talk to people that often. Okay. Or or oh it's the weekend I'll be really social, but I might not get any homework done, or I won't okay. really take care of my health as much. Yeah. And it it kind of sucks, but that's I mean, I I'm not sure if that's more of a of a school issue. And it, I guess thinking about it now, it really isn't. But um, it's just kind it's just kind of hard to like like you. take take these things from school in addition to yeah, our own kind of personal interests. Yeah. Kinda. Okay. Yeah. Like like mail itself, like mm -hmm. being here, it's like a good getaway because yeah. you know you're with your friend. Like you can be everything you have to be. Like you can exactly. be social in your classes. You mm -hmm. can get your work done. You okay. can go do it. But like it's just, I think it gets put on the back burner once yeah. you're out of school because you know pa people like to talk about this generation versus this generation. Yeah. Whereas like we are under probably the most pressure coming up mm -hmm. as yeah. it is. Like I, you know yeah. we have to just to get into college we have to be. Yeah. It's not just grades anymore. Yeah, it's there's about clubs. It's about yeah. Everything. There's and there's. Then if you, sorry, I didn't and if you're not on. the top of your game, you're going. Fifty, sixty thousand dollars in debt just out of the out of college. Exactly. There, there, there's a lot of pressure to to be at the top. But if mm -hmm. we're all at the top, then like no, no one's at the no top. No. Yep. And then it's like, well, how do you differentiate yourself from this person in California who's got also has yeah. a three point six GPA and does all yeah. these clubs? Yeah. Or how do you do this? And it's crazy to think like it's just a money like college in itself is a money-making scheme mm -hmm. that's yeah. embedded itself within oh, the yeah. education program. Oh, yeah. And I have a theory that like. Now maybe not next two decades, but in a in the foreseeable future, it won't mean anything, because college oh, degrees course. it originally was to show that you're a caliber above yes. everyone else, mm -hmm. but now everyone's getting them. Yep. So like, what makes you special just to have a college degree? Absolutely. Right. So. But I mean, as far as the school itself, I think there's, there's a great atmosphere here. Okay. Right. Um, you know, and I, I while there's a lot of pressure, I do kind of enjoy the fact that you're you're motivated to achieve more. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you're not just sort of like like, well, you can do it if you want. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not gonna make you. It's kind of yeah. like like you're like, you're like encouraged to, and I, and I I do really value that aspect here. Okay. Like I think it's a good school for competitors, whether yeah. that be for athletes. You're coming yeah. to a school with, you yeah, know, especially you're gonna, athletes. You're gonna have competition for yeah. any position. But like me personally, I came from like from a school like Barrett, as much as I love Barrett, it wasn't very academically challenging. Okay. But coming to a school where you have kids from other places, and mm -hmm. you have like TMS, Johnson. Yeah. And I'm a very competitive guy, so if I see a kid getting a better grade than me in a yeah. class, like, like, I, gotta, I have yeah. to one-up you. Like me and yeah. this girl, Morgan Green, we we continue. <laughs> you like, beef right. now. No, like I, I beat her in <laughs> physics. I finished in a higher you grade. You beat her in physics, but okay. she's beating me in calculus right now, and like, that's one of the things that's driving me so to get better and better. Good. It's always about just reaching the next level for okay. sake of competition. Well, yeah, I always want to have an idea of where you all are because we can we can assume, we can infer, you know, but it's always best to talk to you and have an idea and let you all really say, you know, what you feel, what you see, what you think. So, yeah. yeah. I think we should do, like... Is there for the SBDM? Can we get like a student representative to actually like vote? There are stuff? some schools that go down that road. I don't know as far as voting and all that, but I can 
was definitely something we can talk about to see what's what. Like that'd be awesome. So yeah. Just like and like you have all your class presidents, and then you have actually student debt. Yeah. Because like yeah. class presidents, you like what do like fundraising and stuff like that. That's part of the job, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. you got someone that actually like goes in and maybe yeah. maybe the, it is the class president, the the senior class that goes in and speaks for the yeah. student body, and instead of it being a class election, you can make it a school election. Who knows? Whoa, that would be a, oh for the okay. I think it was like, just for the yeah yeah like yeah, just yeah, for yeah. that position mm-hmm. you could campaign the you, whole school for the whole, and then yeah. for that the, could also yeah. like bring classes closer together and because I don't think at Mail there's really a big class divide like I think people are friends with every class but like that would just take it one step further. Well, yeah, I can see that. Awesome. Yeah, that's something too. Is that I, I like I like the uh, the connectedness that we all kind of have. But like you yeah. talked about earlier with like like this whole like like the H is our shield. You yeah. know that's that's probably like the best tagline to use for, for a school like Mail, mm-hmm. and that we're all kind of just this one big mm-hmm. community. There really so. is no class divide. Yeah. Like school, well, like there's schools in the other places where like seniors are seniors and mm-hmm. freshmen are irrelevant, but you know, <laughs> like here it's just, you can see a freshman walk down the hall with the senior being dapping up and being, yeah, being best buds, which yeah. I, I love to see. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for coming out today. Thank you all. Appreciate your time and I your, appreciate y'all, and your stories. You know it. Anytime. Want to talk? I'm always here. Yeah. All right. All right. Appreciate y'all. Have a good one.